Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a software developer based in Baltimore. And at this point, you've been learning with Codecademy for a while, and so you're ready to test out your new coding chomps, but you don't quite know where to start. Does the situation sound familiar? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, I'll go over some general things that I've used to get that extra bit of practice in, and some places you can hit up where you can expand your learning. As we go along, I'll also include links in the video and the description below on all the resources that I'm mentioning. When you finish the Codecademy courses you set out to learn, you may feel like you have this arsenal of knowledge ready to go at any given moment. And that's great, and I'm glad you're able to pick down whatever Codecademy was throwing down. But there's a bit of a hitch with that. Codecademy is a great starting point for learning different programming languages and introducing concepts, but there's only so much you can cover in a course. A good chunk of mastering a language is learning through experience. For example, I was writing some code in this programming language called Go, and I had been working with it for about half a year. And at that point, I could confidently say that I knew how to concatenate, or combine, two strings together. But then this Go expert swung by and told me that there's a more efficient way to concatenate strings together. And it blew my mind, to the point where now, every time I concatenate strings in a new language, I have to double check to make sure I'm doing it in the most efficient way. When I first came across this, I was thinking, how the heck is anyone supposed to figure this out? And this is really where having a solid foundation comes in. You don't have to go so far as to know all of a language's optimization algorithms, but just having a better understanding of how the language works can help you build that foundation to figure out new questions. And you can get this through experience. There have been so many times in interviews, in some code I'm trying to write, in a meeting, where I've been caught off guard not knowing the answer immediately. But when I gather together the things I do know, I can piece it together and build a solution. Just like any speaking language, fluency comes with practice and repetition. As you complete more challenges, it'll become muscle memory for you. One thing I would also recommend is to try looking things up online or in the documentation for the language you're working in. The Codecademy forums and Stack Overflow have a lot of great questions and answers from people of all levels, and you'd be surprised by what else you can pick up when you go straight to the documentation. Like when I was looking at the documentation for some of the JavaScript functions for arrays, I found that the find function isn't compatible on Internet Explorer. But when I scroll back through the API and looked at each of the available functions, I found that there is a sum function. Well, not just some function. Well, yes, some function, but it's some function called sum that is compatible with IE and could be used as an alternative to find. I also recommend that you sharpen your coding chops with daily challenges. These are good ways to keep your problem solving skills in check and are also helpful long term since they can help you prepare for job interviews. Some good ones are Code Wars, Project Euler, and Codecademy Go. Codecademy Go is great in particular because you have a place to review concepts and work through some practice problems on the go. What's really neat is that there are also quick stories you can read that can give you more insight into other people's coding journeys. Plus, the design is definitely on Team Cute. I mean, look at the ninja! I dare you to tell me it's not cute! You may also want to go back through the course and jot down some notes. You can do by hand or type it up somewhere, just so you have some way to reinforce and reabsorb the material. You'll be surprised by the number of things you missed on the first pass. I've also talked to a lot of people that don't quite feel ready to transition from Codecademy courses to developing on their own local machine. So I suggest starting with Codecademy's command line course. There, you can learn how to use the terminal, which is what you'll need in order to run your programs. What's neat is that every computer comes with one, so there's no need to do any additional installation, unless you're on Windows and want to use Bash. We have some resources that can explain the terminal further. There's also the Git course if you're feeling adventurous. And you'll also want to select an editor, which is a place for you to write out your code. Depending on your editor, it can come with some extensions that will identify syntax errors or highlight reserved words to make development much easier. Sublime and Atom are really popular, but let's be real, VS Code for the win, am I right? I really like the high customizability and have found that it performs pretty darn well. We've also got some in-depth articles that will walk you through setting up your editor on both Macs and Windows. Now all that's left is for you to get your language of choice set up, and you guessed it, we've got walkthroughs for that. 
Don't forget that all of these resources are in the description below. If you want to get some practice working locally, here's a good opportunity to work on that project you've been sitting on for months. Or if you don't quite feel ready to jump straight in, you can also try recreating the Codecademy projects on your local machine so that you reinforce what you've learned in the course while focusing on navigating through your local setup. Also, I'd like to point out that a lot of my examples seem to be web development focused, but they still apply to other aspects of software development as well, not just web dev. If you're having trouble coming up with ideas on what to make, we've got some other videos lined up, like how to build a portfolio that can hopefully spark some ideas for you. One thing I recommend is to tackle something that's interesting to you, because remember, you're going to be stuck with it for a while. I have a friend who was just learning React, and he started with a to-do list. It was pretty straightforward, didn't really have a lot of bells and whistles. But among my friends, we loved to play this obscure Chinese card game, but couldn't find a good app that will let us play it online. So he built it on React, and it was phenomenal. Yes, it took him a lot longer to flesh out, but the end product was amazing, and he ended up exploring React a lot more than he did with his first project. One thing that I've also seen happen pretty often is that people will often get stuck and then abandon the project entirely. Don't give up. It's natural to get stuck and to get stuck often. This is why building a solid foundation is really important. It'll help you know where and how to break things down into bite-sized pieces. Also, as a friendly reminder, you can look things up online because chances are someone else is in the same boat as you. And if you don't see the question, then ask it. The Co-Academy forums are a great place to start. Even though you've finished all the courses, you're still learning. It's just that in these kinds of situations, you're learning a different side of development that doesn't have as clear of a structure as the courses on Codecademy. Because at this point, you've come really far, and so now you're learning how to build and debug your solutions. And don't worry if you feel like it's incredibly hard. The first time you ever do anything is going to be hard. I remember the first time I tried to stop a program in the terminal, I ended up crashing my computer. Oops. There was another time where I was just running a program in the terminal and then I crashed my computer. And another time where I was running too many programs and then I crashed my computer. So the moral of the story is that just like your computer, you too can give back up again. And don't be shy. Contributing to open source projects is also a way to get more exposure to the developer community. There are a lot of great projects out there that need someone to dust off the cobwebs. You'll get to learn other people's coding styles and pick up some coding norms along the way. There's a lot of talk out there about how great diversity is, particularly with coding. And one of the reasons is because you gain exposure to so many more perspectives and you learn different ways of looking at something. For example, I was working on a React app with a team with two other people and all three of us had a very different approach to organizing the components. The best approach that we ended up taking was none of them, but rather a new approach that the three of us had worked on together. When you work with other people, you end up learning more from each other than you could from a textbook. You gain valuable team experience, and you also recognize the strengths that you yourself contribute to the team. I mean, I could go on for miles about developing in a team, but I'll save my soapbox for another day. Ultimately, you come out a stronger programmer. For professional developers, these team skills are incredibly valuable. If you're wondering where to go to build your network, you don't have to look very far. Codecademy has a dedicated pro community that have a ton of resources and spaces that are focused on connecting learners with each other. You can find a group to hop on a project with or build out your own. The forums and Facebook page are a great place to meet other developers. Going to local meetups will also help you practice talking the talk, meaning you have a chance getting used to the developer jargon and recognize how it's used in an enterprise setting. It also helps you with solidify your understanding of key concepts on a high level. But whatever you end up doing, remember to also make time for yourself so you don't burn out. Sometimes it's easier to find a solution when you take a break and give your brain some time to digest and breathe and then come back later. Thanks so much for watching. Please join the conversation by dropping a comment below and subscribing to this channel. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, you can start learning on Codecademy today.